After the collision with an asteroid, the space station was destroyed. The only person alive is a female astronaut who got stranded all by herself in outer space. She is running out of oxygen and has no connection with Earth. How is she going to survive? The story begins in space in orbit around the Earth. A research astronaut named Ryan Stone is repairing a telescope on the shuttle Explorer. For a woman, this is the first space mission. However, under the guidance of experienced astronaut Matt Kowalski, she feels confident. Dr. Stone is unable to quickly fix the breakdown, so Kowalski comes to her rescue. He jokes around and relieves the tension of the situation. At this point, Houston informs the astronauts that a rocket has hit a Russian satellite. Its debris is orbiting at an incredible speed. But it seems that the debris trajectory does not intersect with the Explorer. Astronauts carelessly enjoy the view of the Earth and are unaware of the impending danger. Unexpectedly, Houston orders the mission to be aborted and returned to the shuttle as debris from the Russian satellite has damaged other ships. Now a pile of space debris is moving towards the Explorer faster than a bullet. But Ryan hesitates, and the astronauts do not have time to get inside the shuttle. Houston warns that the connection could be interrupted at any time. Satellite debris collides with the shuttle at crazy speed and disables it. The part of the spaceship Dr. Stone was holding onto falls off. The astronaut begins to drift off into outer space. Kowalski tries to keep in touch with her on the walkie-talkie, but she is terribly frightened and cannot answer. However, she soon pulls herself together and informs the commander of the necessary landmarks. Kowalski finds Ryan and flies up to her with a custom rocket engine. He urges her to calm down and save the oxygen in her pack. With a tether, Kowalski connects their suits and pulls Ryan back to the shuttle. Communication with Houston is interrupted, and the astronauts do not know what awaits them on the Explorer. Dr. Stone sets a timer for 90 minutes. After all, that's how long it takes the debris to go around orbit and collide with the shuttle again. The oxygen level in Ryan's pack drops sharply to 6%. Arriving on the Explorer, the astronauts realize that only the two of them are left alive. The bodies of the rest of the expedition members randomly move around the broken shuttle. Dr. Stone blames herself for the death of the team. It seems to her that the tragedy occurred because of her delay during the repair of the telescope. But the commander reassures Ryan that the collision with the debris could not have been avoided. After looking around, Kowalski decides to get on the neighboring ISS satellite. Although the path to it is not close, this is the only chance for survival. Dr. Stone quickly runs out of oxygen in her tank, and she has no choice but to agree with the decision of the commander. On the way, Kowalski tries to calm and entertain his colleague with a conversation. 4. This is the last flight into space, after which he must retire. The experienced astronaut does not lose his temper and continues to stay lighthearted. He says he still plans to break the record for most time spent in outer space. A terrified Dr. Stone is reluctant to up the conversation, but still talks a little about her life. It turns out that no one on Earth is waiting for her. She had a daughter that died at the age of four, hitting her head while playing tag. Since then, Ryan's life has lost its meaning. She simply performs automatic actions without experiencing any joy. After sharing these deep feelings, Dr. Stone reports that she has 1% oxygen left. Kowalski urges her to keep her composure and breathe a little. Moreover, the ISS is only five minutes away. After examining the station, Kowalski realizes that it has also encountered space debris and is out of order. The astronauts have abandoned it, and the only Soyuz-type ship is not suitable for returning to Earth. However, Kowalski believes that the Soyuz can get to the neighboring Chinese station Tiangong. The jet fuel in the Kowalski suit's engine is running low, but the man jokes that Russian vodka is suitable as fuel. Astronauts make a hard landing on the surface of the ISS and try to cling to at least something. The cable that held their suits together breaks. Now the astronauts can do little to help each other. Dr. Stone flies far away from the station, but suddenly her leg catches on the lines of the spaceship's parachute. Kowalski is also launched away from the ISS, but at the very last moment Ryan manages to catch him by the cable on his suit. She promises to get her commander out. However, he realizes that the parachute lines will not support them both, so he asks Stone to let him go. She begs him to not leave her alone. But Kowalski decides to sacrifice himself to save Ryan and unhooks the carbine on his suit from the cable. He believes that she can make it without him. Ryan is in despair. The oxygen in her pack is completely depleted. But Kowalski is still in touch and tells the gasping woman how to get inside the station. She's going to board the Soyuz and fly for Kowalski. However, the commander assures Ryan that this is not technically feasible and advises her to learn to let go. Finally, Kowalski says that now he will definitely break the coveted record. He admires the beauty of Earth and loses all contact. With great difficulty, Ryan finds the hatch. Once at the station, she takes off her space suit and greedily inhales the air. Finally, she feels relatively safe. Here, Stone tries to contact the commander by radio, but he does not answer. Houston, too, remains silent. So Ryan is left completely alone. Suddenly, a fire starts at the station. Stone tries to extinguish it, 
but the flame flares up more and more. At the last moment, she manages to close off the burning compartment, and it explodes. Ryan gets into the control cabin and tries to understand the instructions written in Russian. She had never flown a Soyuz before, only a simulator on Earth. However, she manages to undock the ship from the station and starts moving. However, it turns out that the parachute, released by the Soyuz, caught on the ISS. Now the ship cannot move, being tied to the station. After several unsuccessful attempts to get the Soyuz away, Stone realizes that she will have to manually disconnect the lines. She puts her space suit back on and goes into space. At that moment, a timer goes off on her watch. This means that deadly debris has already orbited and is about to appear near the ISS. She hopes that she will have time to complete the work and fly away from the station. She is wrong, debris is shooting at the ISS and destroying different components. Ryan is trying to keep her composure and keep going. But flying debris suddenly causes an explosion at the station. The ISS is almost completely destroyed. The Soyuz, which Stone is holding on to, begins to rotate at chaotically high speeds. It's getting harder for Ryan to stay close to the ship. However, eventually the Soyuz moves away from the wreckage and slows down its rotation. Dr. Stone miraculously survives and gets back inside the ship. She sits at the helm and heads for the Chinese station Tiangun. Ryan tries to start the Soyuz, but it seems to have ran out of fuel. The helpless woman comes to complete despair and cannot do anything else. The temperature in the Soyuz's cockpit plummets and Ryan begins to freeze. She can hardly feel her fingers anymore. Without much hope, Dr. Stone again tries to contact Houston, but instead accidentally picks up a signal from Earth from a certain man named Oningok. Ryan does not understand the language the man speaks and does not expect help from him. She simply listens to the barking of Oningok's dogs and is comforted. Ryan shares her fears with an uncomprehending companion. She asks to pray for her, then Oningok sings a lullaby to a child. These sounds move the astronaut even more. She remembers her dead daughter and looks forward to meeting her soon. Ryan turns off the oxygen supply to the cockpit and prepares to fall into an eternal sleep at the sound of the lullaby. Suddenly, she hears a knock on the ship's porthole from space. It's Kowalski, who miraculously managed to survive. He gets on board the Soyuz and continues to joke as if nothing had happened. He cheers Ryan up by drinking Russian vodka and boasting that he has broken the record for the longest spacewalk. Kowalski believes that the Soyuz could easily be launched without fuel if the soft landing engines are used. But despaired, Ryan doesn't even want to try. Kowalski suggests that she is simply tired of living. He asks Stone to sort out her feelings and decide whether she is ready to come to terms with the death of her daughter or not, and remember that life is beautiful. It turns out that Kowalski's return was just a dream. But it is this conversation in Stone's imagination that gives her strength. Now she knows what to do next. Ryan resumes the oxygen supply to the cockpit. Then she disconnects the ship from the additional modules and sets the landing parameters on the panel. At this time, she turns to the deceased Kowalski and asks him to say hello to her daughter in the afterlife. Ryan finally comes to terms with the death of her baby. Now, for the love and memory of her daughter, she pulls herself together and prepares to fight for her life to the end. Soyuz is on the way. Ryan flies up to the dilapidated Tiangong and sees that the station is rapidly losing altitude and is about to enter the Earth's atmosphere. But now she is determined. With the words enough riding, let's go home. She ejects from the Soyuz. Once in outer space, she takes an incredible risk. After all, she will no longer be able to return to the Soyuz, and getting to the falling Tiangong is not so easy. Only the jet of a fire extinguisher helps her maneuver in space, but the charge of the bottle is running out. Ryan calculates the correct flight path and finally gets to the Chinese station. She throws out the empty fire extinguisher and at the last second manages to grab the Tiangong's hull. She has almost no strength left, but she boldly moves towards the hatch. She almost loses her grip of the ship multiple times. But with an incredible effort, Ryan is determined and opens the hatch of the Tiangong. By this time, the ill-fated fragments of the Russian satellite have managed to fly around the Earth again and overtake the astronaut. However, Ryan manages to get inside the Tiangong and close the airlock door behind her. While Dr. Stone moves through the station, space debris destroys it outside. Ryan soon finds herself in the control cabin of the ship and sees that all the buttons are signed with Chinese characters. But the woman is no longer despondent. With the help of intuition and a counter, she selects the correct buttons and undocks the Shenzhou ship from the station. Realizing that no one can hear her, Ryan still turns to Houston. She reports that she now has two possible outcomes. Either she will miraculously survive and share an amazing story with her colleagues, or she will be torn to pieces on entry. Due to the hard entry of the ship into the dense layers of the atmosphere, the astronaut experiences terrible turbulence. But Ryan has no regrets and is ready to ride like a breeze. On the ship and other parts of the station that have fallen off, thermal protection burns out. Therefore, now a huge amount of flaming debris from the station is flying to Earth. Due to the large amount of damage, 
The Shenzhou control system almost stops working. However, Ryan manages to separate the ship from the extra modules and program a soft landing. The wreckage of the station is gaining more and more speed as it approaches the Earth. They all flash and collide with each other. Part of the skin flies off the Shenzhou, and a fire starts already inside the cabin. When approaching the ground, the ship deploys a parachute for an emergency landing. At the same moment, Houston suddenly gets in touch. The flaming ship splashes down on a lake. Ryan does not answer Houston, she only tries to escape from the fire and get out. She opens the hatch, and the cabin is rapidly filled with water. Ryan struggles to get off the now sinking ship. Taking a big breath of air, she exits the cabin, but cannot the surface because of the weight of her suit. Ryan frees herself from all unnecessary weight and surfaces safely. Looking up at the sky, she notices the burning wreckage of the Chinese station. Exhausted, she makes it back to shore. She clutches the earth in her hand and thanks it for saving her. Ryan struggles to her feet and smiles. Now she truly understands the value of life. Feeling a surge of happiness and gratitude, she starts walking.